In this video, we're going to retouch photo with AI. Specifically, we're going to take this photo, which is already kind of have an interesting pose. But if you notice right here, we have elements from rain system, like on the top of the shot as well. Floor is not horizontal. Then we're going inside the Photoshop and readjusting, removing and retouching as well as enhancing by removing some noise and increasing sharpness and removing also some blurring from this. So let's go ahead and start work. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin by selecting our photos. I'm using Adobe Preach. And when we select photo, we like it right here. You can see beautiful jump, everything. We'll just go ahead, double time, click to open this file inside the camera raw. And the reason is because usually I shoot as a raw format. It's allowed us to have it more information, preserve some highlight shadows and also coloring. First things what I'm going to do here is to take our highlights and take them all the way down. You see how we restore some of those loose highlights. It does will flatten the image in some case, but it's okay. We'll go restore this a little bit later. Shadows, we can bring shadows a little bit up and notice as we bring shadows, we have it nicer raindrops start coming up a little bit more. Next, what I want to do is increase sharpness because this is was shot on a Canon R5, which have an internal bill um, anti-aliasing filter. We want to compensate for this and we're going to increase the sharpness to about anywhere between 60 and 70 will work very good. So let's go ahead down in our color mixing luminosity you could pop up a little bit more if you lost too much color in the skin tones or anything pop up just a little bit orange up on luminosity level brighten up but problem is right here we have our bricks outside which close enough to the skin tones and in this case we'll just leave it a little bit down maybe plus one won't increase too much and of course in geometry what i want to do it is going and select the compensation for our element. So this is look OK. Optics, we want to enable remove chromatic abbreviations and use the profile correction. Notice if we disable those two ones, they will have a little bit more vignetting and distortion on our lens. So we want to restore and as well chromatic abbreviations because we have it raindrops and with lens, you'll have it a little bit kind of distortions mostly on a side of the lens. It won't be that affecting this specific image, but it's better just to keep it clean. After this, we'll go ahead and click open. Here we have our image inside the Adobe Photoshop. This Photoshop is a beta version and it does include new AI aware tools. So it will utilize the same engine as Firefly using, if you're familiar with this or not. And we'll see how we can use it, those tools to actually improve this photos, remove some elements, how it's work. Keep it in mind because it's a beta version and specifically with AI too. You cannot use this for commercial work according to the license agreement. But it's give you good perspective what is coming very soon to Adobe. It is have questions about copyright when used on your image. And I will have a special video coming out that I did research about copyright AI and your own work and see how that is will affecting you. The general rule, your image, whatever we don't touch with AI, we don't process with AI, will still copyright it and elements that creating by AI, it's a public domain. So this is kind of simple overview, very fast what's going on. But we'll get it more a little bit in, de in depth in another video. So right here, what I'm looking at is a very interesting video, but we have it bad angle and we have it stuff on the top. First, let's go ahead and click on our crop tool and I want to just position slightly so it will look similar. Next, let's extend our canvas and I'm going to extend up this way just to restore some of this information we want to crop. Mostly, I don't want to be too close to the feet. I think this one will work kind of interesting. Next, what I want to do right here on the top, where it says default, click down and select Content Aware Tool. After this, let's go ahead and press Enter. 
Because the processing, you can see we add some elements. Some of those we don't want it. Some of them look a little bit bad, but in general it is extend ours. So let's go ahead duplicate this layer. So we'll create another layer. Let's get closer a little bit to see to the image. And what I don't like it, it's like right here you can see how we definitely can see its extension. We lost some of the bricks in this area, and we have this ugly stuff on top. So let's go first with them select the, our tools and i'm going to use the patch tool with patch tool we'll just need to go and select all of these top areas okay and as we're selecting you notice right here come up our generator fill elements so we'll click generator fill don't worry about put anything in a prompt and click generate what this actually does in this case ai analyze image analyze the structure subject so it's one replicate subject which kind of very nice how it does but it will analyze all the bricks all the scenery here and you can see what's happening we generated our wall of course we'll have three different options we can go through all of them and i think this the third one work actually very good so this is what i want to go select if we look what is generated it's generated for us this piece of all wall of course in old tools when we created all ele all element tools usually we select and a drag or use it clone tool or other things take from the image with new ai generative tool it saves you a lot of time you can see how clean and nicely it's removed next what i want to do it is remove some of this side of the wall because it's a darker right here just to replace so let's go ahead and select notice i'm just still be on the same layer as before generative create we'll go select our patch tool again let's go just select this element here and again generative generate okay now we have a few our versions we can go through this is version one two and three again i like the third one better because it does provide better colors let's check also what we can do down below here again we're going and select this area okay if you miss something let's add plus with this again generate your fill generate so we'll see how this will perform because you can see it's harder line in this area this little bit brighter same as this area and we have it closer to the foot so this is will be interesting experiment and you can see it's done and we go through all of them oh this is actually like look it's add angle which is very interesting and this way i think i'm going with this generative okay after this i want to generate a little bit more in this area so i'll just select it generate and we can see how it's add they go straight this is actually look better i think with the second we leave it right here let's go ahead now zoom out we do have it a little bit discoloring we can generate more but i'm probably going to use a dodge and burn tool on this let's look overall on our photo and you can see we have it about composition right there i would would like extend this line maybe to a little bit higher but also in this case we can play around and see what is proportional will be work working okay next this is we using adobe generative tool and if we take all of these images let's go put them in a group we'll call this ai and if we look in a group you can see how much it was changed course we did apply some normal crop and a generator field before but it is a big difference it's make much faster and easy to create this way so other things what i want to show you it's another ai tool and reason is we're going to use if we zoom very close you can see the grain and reason is grain because it was shot with natural light in a room with like only two windows so we have a very low light and we also need to have it a little bit higher um, speed on a shutter because we don't want it we don't have a drops but we have those lines from rain that created so we don't want to create it too much 
and because of this we have it great so I'm going to create press control shift alt E control option alt E on a Mac and this will take all visible layers and create new layer by merging all of those so next what I want to do is remove some of this grain for this we're going to use another AI tool and it's well going from the Topaz Live called the Noise AI. I will leave all links for this down below in the description so you can check for yourself. It's also come as a trial and very often they have it actually on good sale as well. Okay, let's go ahead, open this tool and we can actually move down before right about here. Okay, I think this is enough. And we can compare before and after. Of course, it's we don't want to remove too much of the noise it will create some nice element but it does you can see how it's smooth removing some of this we can increase and right here you can um you would like increase sharpness you know i don't think we need too much on the sharpness because let's reduce at this time we'll do sharpness different way but you can see how much it's reduced some of this noise we do want to have it a little bit grain and give it this greediness. Again, it's creative approach, but it's up to you. But general, I can see like right there, you can see how much it is reduce some of this noise. So it's much, much cleaner. Again, the denoiser work interesting way because it does analyze structure of the picture, analyze the content of the picture. It's using AI and the noising just in the elements the repeating like for example a grain noise and other things okay we'll go ahead and click apply okay and here we have it, our image after of course we can go and select before and after you can see it did a very good job to suppress of the noise to removing okay let's go ahead and next what we want to do I want to increase a little bit sharpness and if we look on an image because again shutter speed you see how blur going with the hands I don't want to remove all the way blur because it's give it ex like perspective of the motion but I want to suppress a little bit and give it sharpness so for this we're going to same use it another tool let's go again create new layer by pressing ctrl shift alt e and in this case, we'll go to filters. We again going to use a Topaz Lab, but on this case, we're going to use the Topaz Sharpness AI tool. By the way, you can notice this is three different tools. They also Topaz have it Photo Lab, what call I think it's where all tools together. That's kind of nice option because you don't need to relaunch different application. Personally, I actually like them separate. Okay right here you can see we have a sharpness let's zoom a little bit closer mostly on the hand and this edge is what I'm looking for okay it's so an updating still updating so and I can see it does remove add a little bit more sharpness like right here on the finger so we can definitely see um, I don't know how much I want to increase let's remove noise but remove blur just a little bit increasing and the nice things because we can compare before and after it does process remove like right on the bottom you can see this is did a very good job right here clean up this light but I don't want to remove all away so it still have a nice beautiful blur okay and if we there you go yeah we have this nice I think it's a good enhancement so after we okay let's go ahead click apply and here we have it, our sharpness applied. Okay, so let's go ahead next. I want just a retouch a little bit more on the image itself. So we have a nice clean picture. We have it beautiful on a black. And this is actually not, uh, on the bottom. You can put a text in. It's almost like pre-made for the poster to do some ads there. Okay, next what I want to do is use a dodge and burn just to fix a little bit. Notice right here we still have a little bit dark in this area and I wasn't very much concerned about this because we're going to utilize dodge and burn and also drive attention a little bit to our subject. For this we'll go create new layer. We'll go and fill this layer with a 50% gray, 100% opacity. When we're going click OK. So we'll have this gray layer. This is will be our base for Dutch and Burn. Next, we want to switch blending mode to the soft light. Take our brush 
and our brush we're going to use the opacity 10 soft and we want to have it soft around edge so if we're going to start playing you can see right here it's already kind of making darker and it's our goal to add a little bit more shadows general we're going vignetting you also can change instead creating vignetting if we look on the lights because come from the window this way we can switch to the white color and add a little bit more rays as well you can little bit give it highlights and you can see how we're fixing very easy from this area so the next things we can also add additional elements of interaction with the environment to do this let's create new layer we'll have it our brush switch to the white color let's go with a hundred percent opacity okay so we'll take our brush put it a little bit on the end hundred percent click from you see right here it's where lights coming so we'll click right there move it brush and hold down shift click again we'll do same things from that point just imagine it's from lights coming and going towards the person next we can reduce size of the brush and do same things maybe a couple times even passing through our person let's go ahead next blur we'll go to using using gaussian blur for this and as a blur we just this one should be more good click OK and switch these ones to the soft light use it opacity to increase or decrease but you can see this way we can create very interesting light effect like a jumping to the light okay after when we're done creating all these effects let's add some little bit color for this we're going to use it the selective colors and we'll start with our black depend what you're going after you can increase contrast on the black or let it look a little bit more flatten but i think we just little bit i like usually take darker tones to the colder so for this we'll go with the blue and you can see if we slide to like minus three five we'll add a blue same adjusting to the greens we'll add a little bit more cyan and right here and you can see how we change from almost like a warm little bit to the colder next for the neutral colors and this is our neutral colors we can modify here as well we'll go and take this just a little bit like my plus one just a little bit in and we can go to warmer color so for this one actually we're going a little bit zero on the yellow reds we can bring just a little bit in and as well greens or magenta you know just let's maybe a little bit in the greens and i'm still looking if i want to go yellowish or you know what let's go a little bit even to the blue as well so the combination of this will create still warmer colors for us and you can see we add a little bit more contrast between um, complementary colors that is cyan and red let's go now select our whites and on the whites you can see we can add a little bit more i think with whites let's go actually add a little bit more lights going on the side and we can go to the little bit warmer in this case actually you know what cyan look nice let's go that way so we'll see what i want to do is play with a little bit of the colors yeah i think this way will look way more interesting there you go something with colors because general this is um, not very high saturation or contra or color enhanced kind of it's look almost do tone image because of the brick skin tone and the water haze all this adjusting make less saturated image so this is why we kind of want to play a little bit more with colors so this way is very nice we can just touch up with the colors make it look more interesting and a pleasant with complementary color next let's go ahead and create curve on this curve what i'm going to do take this end the light one and bring all the way down next we're going to select our marquee tools go around if you notice i'm just going a little bit out of the edges okay and fill up this with a black color so if you notice we have it like white frame around this is create black frame but i want to switch this to vignetting and for this we'll click on a mask take our feather and bring feathering in next let's go ahead and take this layer and switch from normal blending mode to the soft light 
Notice what we have it. We have nice, beautiful vignetting, look a little bit natural. Anytime we actually can change this the vignetting, and I like this method because we can go all the way to the white if you need it, or black, or we can even tone down with different color. I think the black will look a little bit more, give it attention on the person itself. Okay, let's go ahead, zoom it slightly out. I'm going to take all of these elements that we applied, put them in one folder, go retouching, and we can see this is what was before, and this is after. We did not modify too much, we hardly touch our person, just a little bit to reduce noise, but overall we have it now more isolated, interesting composition created. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. You know the usual stuff, but that usual stuff, it actually helped a lot. As well, if you watch video all the way, do not drop, then you are my superhero. Have a great day.